Hello, and welcome to the video version of the Left of Greg podcast. I'm Brian Marin, the host and creator of the show. As always, I will be joined by human behavior expert, Mr. Greg Williams, who the show is affectionately named after. On the show, we discuss different topics through the lenses of what we call human behavior pattern recognition and analysis. If you'd like to find out more about what that is, please check the links in the episode details and go to our website to learn more. Please don't forget to follow us on social media. The links are also in the episode details and hit the like and subscribe button to help support our work. Thanks for tuning in and we hope you enjoy the show. We're on. All right, Greg, um, we are on, we are live again. So those of you listening, you can always follow me. And when we pop up on Facebook, you can interact with us. So today we'll jump right into it, Greg. We are talking about the importance of words in, in, in one sense, but also giving, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit of a, a, I guess, legal precedent and reasons why we talk about things in the manner in which we talk about them, if that makes sense. So we're going to jump in and go to a case from Pennsylvania, uh, a 14-year-old by the name of, of Brandon Levy or Levy. Uh, she gets uh, cut as a freshman. She's trying to go out for the cheerleader for to be a cheerleader on the varsity squad at her high school, and she gets cut and doesn't make the team. So what she did is kind of, I guess, the modern version of what probably most kids do when when those types of things happen, Uh, got a little angry about it and decided to go on social media. And so she said she got on there, she made a post on Snapchat said, you know, F school, F cheer, F softball, F everything. Okay, so she kind of spouted off and got upset and, and put that all over social media. So the consequences sort of of that or the repercussions, the second and third order effects were the kind of school jumped in and basically tried to say, hey, like, you can't do that. Um, that's, you know, it, 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 that that violator that goes against our um, some of our rules and regulations regarding things like bullying and things you can and cannot say. And then that made its way up through some of the court systems because they sued saying it's a violation of her first amendment rights. And that's still kind of, kind of going on, but they basically kind of hit through a couple of federal courts, um, said, no, they basically, um, said, no, like this, this, she can say that, uh, you can't tell her, no, she wasn't on school grounds. It wasn't directed. So we're going to, we're going to get into why that occurs, but the reason, one of the reasons why it kind of became a, um, it kind of became an issue is because there was a lot of folks who were saying, Hey, this is bullying. Or if this law is upheld and we cannot censor this type of stuff, or we cannot reprimand her for saying it, you're going to let bullies get away with being bullies and doing bad things. And then they're going to be some of what they're saying, which is hurtful and and has a detrimental effects to the people in the community. Uh, Oh, that's suddenly going to be protected by, um, by their first amendment rights. So, this is important to go to, uh, you know, everyone says, read the constitution or know your rights. Well, I would say uh, more importantly, know your case law, because that's where these things get played out. Right. So we, we always talk about different cases uh, when we're talking about different subjects, because there's a legal, what's called precedent, right? There's legal precedent saying, Hey, what's the precedent for this situation. And in general, a general uh, way of looking at it, especially with the Supreme court is to say, let the previous decisions stand, meaning what has come before us, what has developed um, with our laws, with our courts and the judicial system is powerful. And it was put into effect for a reason, meaning the people at that time made the most logical answer, you know, they could at that time. Now, as things change over time, maybe something gets challenged. And then the court looks at it later on and says, hey, you know what, under this circumstance, you're right, Um, we need to change that or that is unconstitutional because society has changed, laws have changed, um, the policies and procedures have changed. We've learned and grown as a, as a society and as a nation to go, Hey, you know what, actually that, that made sense in, you know, 1875, but in 2020, it actually doesn't. So, so, but that, that has, there's a process, there's a system that that gets played out, especially in the court. So we always throw to, you know, what, 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 what's, what's legal precedent, what, what cases have come before us. So we'll kind of just frame it there, Greg, we'll start. And I know you kind of, there was a, another reason why you kind of brought this to my attention too. Well, first of all, uh, uh, everything that you, you said was correct. I want to make sure that we don't uh, uh, couch this in something else. The F word was prominent in the Snapchat. It's yes. the true full, it starts with an F, ends with yeah. a K. 
Yeah, I, we, we could just it. say it, but it was just you know, too, yeah, I yeah. just don't like that uh, when it's out of context like that. And little did Brandy Levy know that democracy works and our country is so powerful because the Supreme Court of the United States is seeing this case. And it started because a cheerleader got bounced from the Golden Bears team. And, and the idea is when somebody sounds off in our nation, people listen, and it will sooner or later become a, a Supreme Court decision, or at least a lower court decision. And people will talk about it. And the reason, Brian, the reason this is such a tough note, I'll give you twofold. The reason this is a tough Tough, tough not to crack is because SCOTUS, the Supreme Court of the United States, has already said that students can speak or write articles or assemble to form groups or petition the school officials on certain issues. And basically, that's a sort of a political funnel, but, but it doesn't end there because the Supreme Court said that students don't shed their constitutional rights to freedom of speech mm -hmm. and, and freedom of expression at the schoolhouse gates. That's important, Brian, because you and I both yes. know that there's a distinction between public, public and private. And private right, so, right. So in a public school, the teachers, the administrators, everybody that works for the school, including the janitor, is an agent of the U.S. government. That's yes. the way it works. And when I say an agent, I don't mean a secret agent. I mean they're acting the, in concert with rule. They're part of the state. So they're they part are. of the county or states is where whatever it is, doesn't sound like they're a federal, you know, agent, like, you know, in that sense, but yes, they, but, but, but because the federal they work rules for apply. The, yeah, because they work for the government, it's not a exactly. private institution. There's public funding for that. And that's what's majority of what pays for it. So, so they fall under different rules than a private school that exactly. gets to make up certain things or can kick people out if they want under different, you know, so. So if a school would have come Brian and said, here's our rule book and she violated it, ethical code or the yeah. student code or something they can, by yeah. saying this, nobody would have said a word, but because it's a public school, it's protected speech. Now, okay. real briefly, very briefly, because I, I loved in your preamble where you were touching on stuff. How does somebody get pissed over it? Well, this is how I get pissed. Uh, Sean Clemens sends me a string of articles that are all inflammatory. He sends them in an order of finally getting me to go, damn it. Uh, and then I send you the, the, the kernels there. So I'm reading the Gunnison Country Time, Brian, and I just returned from a, a in-person training course. And I'm reading the Gunnison Country Times. It's uh, published once a week on Thursday here to catch up on it. And then the editorial, some guy spouts off in the editorial says, hey, we have to change the First Amendment rights of free speech. We have to change the Constitution because, you know, the other political party, because he was for one political party, is using it to, to cast aspersions on candidates and change the way we vote and do it. Exactly. So yeah. if I was going to write a, a editorial back, it was exactly, then it would say, shut up and sit down. Uh, and then the third one would be an admonition to read your Constitution. So Brian, I would say, if it's okay with you, I would say that if people are listening to us or watching us live or whatever they're doing, get out your yellow pad because you and I are going to have a bit of a romp and we're going to talk why words matter. How's that? Yeah, that, and that's good because especially I think it's important to understand this, um, especially in, in the age of social media and yep. how fast word spread is that they do have meaning, they do matter, and there is legal precedent that covers some of the stuff. So they're just there are issues now, you know, what, what, what people say on certain social media platforms and what they're calling that is, are you a publisher? Are you a open, you know, source uh, of sure. you know, place? Is this, is this considered, does this fall under, the, does Twitter fall under the idea of a town hall? You know I mean? Because there's arguments for both sides of this and how it works. So understanding this is part of the reason why we talk about it and how words matter and when sometimes people get confused when they see things play out and go oh, you can't do that or you can't say that or that yeah yeah, yeah you can they're or, taking it out of the context and you brought up precedent yeah and you brought up the con constitution those are our left and right lateral limits brian and, okay. and so listen if we're going to take a yellow pad this is the way we do it uh you know that i've correctly predicted all u.s supreme court decisions for si about the last 15 years since i've known you you yep. you've you're I think you're at 100% for yep. what um, for what when we when and folks listening what we mean is like we'll talk about a case where the either the Supreme Court already heard it and they're about to issue their opinion on something and Greg will say look this is what it falls under this is what I think that they're going to come down with this is what I think the decision yep. will be and I think as far as I can remember, you've been, you must be, because I would remember if you were wrong, because I'd hold you to it. And, so, <laughs> and you would too. And it's right to do that, Brian. So, it's absolutely right to do that. So, oh, here, uh, so let, let's do this. Okay. I, I will, I will demonstrate how I do that. Some people predict horse races or boxing matches. Yeah. I predict Supreme Court decisions based on this rule. If we, now we just got to figure out how to, how to monetize that, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so I would say write down these first three. Shank, 
and that's shank versus the United States. It's easy to find, yep. even if you spell it wrong. Get low and get lows versus New York. And the final one is Debs, and Debs is another one versus the United States. What's important about these three is it demonstrates how the U.S. Supreme Court thought back in the 1910, 1920, mm -hmm. uh, coming in and out of World War I and beginning of World War II. And what the U.S. Supreme Court said, there's a clear distinction between how we think when we're at war as a nation and what things should be uh, punished. So uh, Shank brings us what's called clear and present danger, which means that if your words are going to create a clear and present danger of a significant evil, that Congress should prevent it before it happens. So with Shank, Shank was making a mistake out there, passing out pamphlets that were saying not to be in support of something. And the overreach was that, listen, because we're at war, that's dangerous speech. And then we come in. So, yeah, uh, and just real quick, because that is the the caveat to it, right? Yep. This is, hey, this is, this is a it, given the context, given the circumstances of the time historically of where their nation's at, this yep. poses a clear and present danger. And so maybe a year or two years before that, it didn't, right? I mean, meaning, yeah, like, but, so, but now it yes. became <clears throat> the standard. So it's always the okay. sounding board. You must always compare against that precedent. Under Even similar context. Even if we're not context. in wartime. No, it, no. It, it, yes. it, it, I want to make sure that you said it correctly, but I don't want somebody to think we have to be at war uh, 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 to talk about Shank. The idea is that right. Shank established a threshold, the threshold being clear and present danger. And so when these cases get seen, you know, yes. they uh, uh, and a, the attorney will reference these cases as precedent, as example, to exactly. argue either for or against whatever their opinion is of, hey, this is why we're going to trial on this. This is why we're the prosecutor. This is what our defense is. And this is why it is, because look at all this precedent. And then they have to weigh yep. that out, right? No, so no, just, you're exactly right. Okay. And, and so when we get to get low and do your yep. homework, I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these cases because I'm going to assume you're going to do your homework, folks. Get low. This was a very, very small scale operation, get low, passing out uh, flyers again. You get what I'm trying to say? But the government reached down and squashed this one because it says, hey, listen, we, we're going to punish speech that threatens the basic existence of our democratic rule of law because it has national security implications. So don't think that just because you're in your basement publishing this flyer, Gutenberg, right. that it doesn't <laughs> matter to the rest of the nation. And Brian, this one, get low speaks directly uh, 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 to our caper uh, here with the foul mouth, uh, what, what I like to call the uh, bar of soap in the mouth decision that the Supreme Court <laughs> is about to make, because it's a small scale one, but it has huge implications. So let's go against Debs, okay? And and Debs versus so, the United and, States. And, and re re real quick, just just for understanding the the Gitlo one. I mean, that's yeah. what you said. It, it threatens existence because of national security implications. So this is again yeah. under different what was called then the criminal anarchy law, right? And and yeah, so, because okay. he was he was advocating the overthrow of the government because we don't want to fight in this war, and he's saying that hey listen, these things are going, and and uh, uh, he defended himself by saying, wait a minute, the Supreme Court has already said uttering, not publishing, and he said both work. The U.S. Supreme we were Court right, and he, because he just said, hey, that's not action, that's just words, right? And and they exactly said, well, right. hang on, hang on, yeah, you may be doing, but but your words are trying to lead to this. You, there's an intent And they're undermining, it. they're thinning the ice, Brian, that's specifically and, what they're saying, even small scale, it's going to chip away at the fabric. And, 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 I, and I think what, and again, to go back to why we always talk about intent, the court established, yep. no, you had intent here. This wasn't just a conversation or words or a paper you wrote. You were exactly. trying to do something with this, and that, which, yeah, is, yeah. which is different, even if you don't do that. And behavior. he even testified that he had the intent. Yeah, right, you, right, so, right so, exactly. So, right. It, so, okay, so I'm sorry. Uh, so, no, no, sure no, that's perfect. I love the way you're doing that. So why, why do I put Debs in that pile? Because they're all that yeah. that pre World War One, World War One, World War Two, but they're as important today as any of them. And and how do they answer Debs, which is basically uh, uh, the same thing, allegedly attempting to cause insubordination and refusal to work in the U.S. military by passing out of uh, pamphlets and having speeches and stuff. And and guess what they did for Debs? Uh, they cited Shank. They said yep. the decisions in Shank are are going to stand. And then the idea behind that is that if you get a decision and a ruling and the U.S. Supreme Court says it's in principle virtually identical to a previous ruling, Brian, that's where they're going to go. So today, if you think that the U.S. Supreme Court is going to uh, uh, create an amendment based on your case, very unlikely. Yeah, yeah. You think that they're going to take a look at previous cases? So when we say do your homework, we absolutely mean it. And, and so now let's go into a school. And, and I would say in this next batch, so Brian, we have a, a batch of three that yeah. teach us how the Supreme uh, Court thinks. And all and of them are about a, 
a concerning words and concerning how you use those words and yep. what the intent is behind them. Right. Because yep. I think that's what a lot of those came down to was, hang on, you're not just, you're not just publishing an op-ed uh, that's anti-war yep. or against the war effort. No, no, yep. no. You're actually inciting action here. And I think that's the you're important exactly. distinction. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. So, so, and, and those takeaways should be highlighted on your yellow pad. So let's talk Barnett and, and, and we're going to talk Barnett, West Virginia versus Barnett. And we're going to talk about what's called Chaplinsky, Chaplinsky versus New Hampshire. And both of these people just happen to be Jehovah's witnesses and right. somebody in the audience is going to go, Oh, you're going after witnesses. No, what I did is I grouped them by content. So the first so, three were wartime around the same time and established clear boundaries. These two uh, uh, have to do with us as a nation, Brian. So when when Barnett comes in, Barnett refuses to salute the the flag flag during the uh, in in school, right? Yep. And said, "Hey, for religious reasons, I'm not going to salute the flag." Exactly. Okay. And there's many flag uh, uh, cases. Yeah. There's flag yep. burning cases, yep. flag waving it at a private trailer park, a flag with the. So here, how uh, uh, can that be a violation of your first amendment rights? Look, you have the absolute right of free speech, which also means you have the free exercise of religion, which right in there. Okay. So what they're saying is that you can on the grounds of conscience, not suit the flag and that pisses people off, Brian, but it's the law. Yeah. And, and, and the so law what, says you have the protection not to salute yeah, no, cause, on your cause the, religious grounds. Yeah. So he said, look, I'm, this is, this I violates my religious beliefs. I'm not going to salute the flag in this situation. And and then the school punished him and right. And said, no, you're supposed to do this, you know, and then they sued. And then the Supreme court said, no, like he doesn't have to do that. They don't have to salute exactly. the flag, you know, that this is, that would be violating forcing them to do that or punishing them for not would be a violation of their first first amendment rights. And which you just nailed, which yeah. is so important is listen, if you don't have to choose a religion, then if you do choose a religion, you don't have to prescribe to everybody's uh, uh, rules and force a citizen to confess uh, their exact wording was confess by word or act their faith in that choice. So in other words, you can't make people say the, the, the prayer at the beginning of the prayer yeah. breakfast. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Because it's my right not to say, it. and as much as that pisses you off, to create a true democracy, Brian, we have to ha have that. And in Chaplinsky, Chaplinsky was was a, a little bit different because, but again, it speaks directly to what we're talking about today. Chaplinsky was walking around and going, if you're not of my religion, you can kiss my ass. And he also came out there and said, uh, you know, you're a, a jerk and your religion blows and you're a racketeer because and, you're bringing yeah, people. You're a fascist. And everybody, yeah, yeah, everybody went up in arms and said, whoa, 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 whoa. So now the U.S. Supreme Court reaches in and says, if you're going to push people to do something, you have to understand that we protect things that are slanderous and obscene because there's other laws that cover that. But when you incite somebody to an imminently violent act, we go back to clear and present danger and shank that you just, Chaplinsky, created fighting words. And if your fighting words incite an immediate breach of the peace where somebody wants to come across and start fighting, guess what? They're not protected speech. And, and there is no hate speech provision. So the closest you're going to get to hate speech, you better quote Chaplinsky because the Supreme Court ruled on Chaplinsky that, listen, you have the right to say all these things. But when it incites that immediate breach of peace, then at that specific second, it's wrong. OK, and this is a really <clears throat> this is a really good one now that that is going to I think is going to get brought up. Uh, oh, yeah. All of these will get brought up. But this one, especially re yep. re coming soon, because um, what's happening as a way to kind of counter some of the issues of, of these kind of unlawful protests and people destroying property. These, a lot of towns or states or, or counties are trying to pass laws saying, um, if you threaten a police, like there's different provisions for, for free speech when it comes to police officers and what you say to them, they're trying to make oh, it yeah. a crime to say certain things to a police officer. And I'm going, whoa, you're getting into kind of a slippery area right there because then they're going to come right back. On. And if you prosecute someone, they're going to come up and they're going to say all of these, like, look, it didn't fall under any of these legal precedents. I can say those words. So, so it, it and it's going to be a challenge. It, it's it will a challenge. be a challenge, so right? It, it goes back to intent. What did you mean yeah. by them? Because you can insult someone all day long, right? I mean, you can say 
certain words or certain things, you know, so long as you're not, you know, impeding on their rights, you're not, um, uh, again, inciting some torp of, in some side, clear some sort of danger, violence, inciting the there's no yeah, clear and present danger, or you're not like, even with us on this podcast, if we yep. were telling our listeners to go out and do something to someone and physical harm, that's not protected under free speech. You get yep. what I'm saying? So we can't say that. And, 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 and then when someone goes out and do some, well, we didn't, we didn't tell them that, you know, we didn't do that. We were just talking and, and it's these words matter because words how matter. they're uh, portrayed or how they're taken is your three yeah. things. I think expertly. So I, I, I part of it. don't know what the hell just happened to my uh, computer once again. But we are, uh, you, it's, it somehow stayed live with you on Facebook yeah, and kept which going, I love. but it did stop recording, uh, at that moment. So sorry for our Facebook listeners, but go back to, can you just retell yeah, yeah. that part so very, of the story? Very briefly, so it was, sales, Detroit yeah, guy, sales. That's, he that's, says, Hey, yeah. look, uh, mom or uh, kids go to mom's purse and send me a dollar bill. Okay, that's protected speech. You can't do that because it incited those little kids to actually do that. The very next case, look it up on your own. It's in California. Guy writes F the draft on his shirt uh, uh, and goes into the, the the draft house, you know, the, the legal place where you have to, to uh, register to be drafted. And the, they arrest him. And the U.S. Supreme Court says you can't violate uh, his constitutional rights. He has the right to express and say those words, even if it offends the general conscience of the public, because it's how he feels. But uh, later in O'Brien, and, and we go to the Boston courthouse caper, he stands on the, the uh, steps of the Boston court and rips up his draft card. Now, here's where the Supreme Court thinks differently. They said the one was my view to the world, I say after draft. The other was you violating a government decision that these draft cards are a formal legal document, and by ripping them up, you violated the law. That, that's an important distinction, Brian, because one was an intent to right. do something harmful. And one was, hey, listen, what the little girl said, F this school. You know what I'm saying? F my my cheerleading program. And that gets us all the way to the the, the final two. I think we uh, uh, need to talk about two or three. I yeah. think t- Tinker and, and Morse. Uh, uh, Tinker versus Des Moines is a very simple one. A bunch of students d- disagreed with the, uh, uh, the Vietnam War. So they said, we are going to protest by wearing these black armbands to school. Look it up. Great case. SCOTUS uh, came back and said, look, there's a distinction between communication through words, words matter, and communication through deeds, actions matter. And they said, here's a clear defining statement. If they walk in and they're just wearing those armbands and they all know within that little group that that's their protest, that's one thing they've got the absolute right to do it. Yeah. If they did that and now start, started blocking exits and turning over chairs and lightning, you know, lighting things on fire, Brian, Tinker said that's uh, versus Des Moines said that's a very different thing. Words versus actions. And, and I like to tie that one to Morse, which, which I like to call the bong hits for Jesus caper, uh, uh, just like this one is now called the soap in the mouth caper. Uh, and bong hits for Jesus uh, just a few years ago. Uh, school supervised event at a public school, again, the distinction, and the kids across the street made a big banner that said bong hits for Jesus. They said most people won't know what bong hits are. Everybody knew what it was. Principal comes over and they get suspended. U.S. Supreme Court says, listen, the reason we'll side with you on this one is not because of the free speech, because it was speech advocating kids to use drugs in school. So the reason I picked this one for you, Brian, is look how close this is to this one. Uh, You said that people said, well, bullying. They're worried that if we side with this little girl that she can say that, that it's going to weaken the bullying statutes at the school. Bong Hits for Jesus would side with that group of people saying that if it advocates drug use, but she didn't say F this guy with a, a, a... police baton yeah she said they f the school and lock out the doors she just was exasperated and used too many f words yeah so so once again back to the title words matter what words you're saying matter because meaning in this specific one like you said they're they are advocating for the use of illegal at the time you know and yep. illegal drugs and then on school so that's completely different what they're doing even they're, if it was a joke that's what People I'm saying. So likely, here, would likely take it seriously. Here, here's an example where, although they did, that was not their intent. 
Yep. Right. I mean, the, we always go back to intent. We go, well, that's great. You might not have intended this. You might not have meant to do this run, but yep. this is what you did under the law. So yeah, exactly your, your, right. your, your ignorance of that doesn't play into account. Like, I'm sorry, this is what the law is. And, and that's a good, important distinction because, you know, we, especially now we always talk about intent and what are they, what's, what's their, their intent behind it. Well, this one, their intent was just to maybe just be you know, funny or make a yep. joke or, or do this. Well, it's, I, I get that, but do, sometimes that that's still illegal. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and just real quick too, on the, on the tinker one you brought up, I, I do want to um, highlight one thing where you, you know, cause you put in there that, you know, they must school officials must be able to prove that the conduct in question would materially and substantially interfere with the operation of, of the school. So Yep. But that it's just an important in there in all of these cases, in those opinions, they will put something in like that, like, right, the, the, they'll write the opinion of the court, you know, and, and then there's always like a dissenting opinion, usually if there is a dissent, and they'll say, hey, this is why this is what it what it falls under. And when it does, when it reaches this threshold, in that consideration, or in that case, materially and substantially interfere with the operation, that's the precedent going forward, that someone exactly. can go, well, did this action you know, substantially interfere with the operation of the school. You know what I'm saying? So just to bring it to the case that we're going to discuss here that we what we are framing this whole conversation around is that, well, it didn't definitely didn't meet that criteria. You, right, you get what right. I'm saying? So, so there, there's certain criteria it has to meet. And that's one of those do it, one of those exactly. in there. And then same thing with your, your, your bong hits uh, uh, for Jesus. And yeah, yeah. Uh, so in Morse, what, what do they say? In Morse, they say, look, we, we say public school students do have some rights they also have rights to political speech and expression, uh, uh, but that doesn't extend to pro-drug messages. So it comes down very clear, and that's that's right on because, with Brandenburg versus Ohio. Because what they say, that may undermine the school's important mission to discourage drug use. So boom, Absolutely. right there, they're, they're interfering with that operation. They're interfering. So it's, words with, with, matter and yep. actions, actions matter. And the intent to to deliberately do those actions, meaning it's inevitable that they're going to occur, is what the court decides on. And you're exactly right, Brian. So, so you're already right now inside the head of the Supreme Court. You're thinking like they do. And I would say take Morse versus Frederick and balance it on Brandenburg. Old one from the 60s. Brandenburg mm -hmm. is a, a KKK leader. He's at a Klan rally, and he says all kind of bad things. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is that, that Ohio had a, a very broad statute that was called the uh, syndicalism law. And what they said is, hey, listen, you can't say these things. You you can't associate with a gang and you can't assemble with the gang and you can't uh, say we want industrial reform or political reform. And now we get that SCOTUS comes along and says forever from, from Brandenburg on, we have a two point standard. One, speech can be prohibited is it, it directed at imminent lawless action. It's in, likely to incite or produce that. And the two is that it's likely to incite or produce such action now, immediately. So, so here, your words are getting people imminent lawless action. They're, they're being incited to it. And here, they're likely to produce such action based on those words. So we're taking it from words, and we're taking it to action. And that's exactly the type of case that we have in Tinker. It's the type of case that we have in Morse. But I don't see it in Brandy Levy. I just so, don't Brian, I, I, I right. Don't and, and this, uh, I, I, and the, the, the Brandenburg v. Ohio one is a good one. Cause like you said, I mean, it can, you know, if it's inciting and producing imminent lawless action, then your speech can be prohibited. Right. Uh, or if it's yes. likely to incite or produce such action, your speech yep. can be prohibited because the, this is where it meets. So there's that standard, but it also understanding where you, we're talking about free speech laws. So they're, yep. Uh, uh, the bedrock of our nation, like what we our free speech laws separate us from everyone else in the world. They're, they're unlike anywhere else. And they're, I, I'm ardent supporter of our free speech laws and what you should be allowed to say. Absolutely. And it's defined like this is, this is a huge thing that, that is really, really coming to light right now. Obviously with the case we're going to discuss, but also just in general, like I said at the beginning with social media and everything. And, and it's a, when you go down this path, it can be a very slippery slope. And I often see people who claim to be big supporters of the Constitution, their rights, and then wanting to, but to say, the oh, that person, you can't <laughs> say those things. Right. You shouldn't be allowed. And right. I'm going to tell you what you can and can't say. And that crosses both political aisles, right? I see it all that the is. time from the, light, from the right and the left. And it's kind of like, wow, you're, you're all being very hypocritical right now. But this was an important one, too, because it reminded me of... Um, 
whether it was the 70s or 80s, I can't I think it was like late 70s, uh, when the KKK wanted to have a rally and, and you know, in um, Skokie, Illinois, where a lot of yes. it's a big Jewish community right outside of Chicago. And the actual, some people from the Jewish community, as well as the ACLU, because people were trying, basically what happened, everyone's like, no, we're going to shut this down. We can't allow them to, to have this rally here. And the, the American Civil Liberties Union, as well as people from, from the Jewish community said, no, you're going to let them have their, you're going to let them speak. Like, because they knew, what did they say? And I think that was even the, the NAACP even got involved, said, no, yep. you let them talk. And, and if, because if you take away their right to say that, what's Who's next? That? Who's What's next, next? with yep. all, with with and this is why legal precedent is so freaking important is because it's always it's not just about this situation. It's about every situation after that is going to get interpreted through this decision. It's this a new is, lens, isn't it? It, it? it absolutely is. It's that new. Well, here's now the precedent that we're using. To, here's our, our comparison to this event. So they're so, so important that people go, look, you, you're, you know, everyone's always screaming, well, this Supreme Court decision, that one. And it's kind of almost like, well, what does this mean to me? The, right. This means more to you than some resolution or executive order or 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 new tax law. You get what I'm saying? Yep. Because this comes down to this is how it gets played out in the streets. These court cases are this is where it happens. And, and so it's important to understand the fact that legal precedent is extremely powerful. Yep. So if you go the wrong way, and maybe if it's maybe like you think of a just a horrible situation where everyone go, yeah, this person that, that was that wasn't that was they shouldn't have done that. We need to punish them. We need to, you know, throw them in jail for this, that or the other thing. And then you go, but, but wait a minute, if that goes through, then then now that that's the new standard, that's the new it precedent, becomes a, the law of the land. They're now going to use that in an area where you may not disagree with, or you may not agree with later on yes. and go, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you didn't you, know you've taken away this your was going to happen. Yeah. And that, that's, that's the point with these. And that's why I'm such an ardent supporter of anything free speech. You should be allowed to say it's what yep. you're, and I don't even care what it is. It's just, are you inciting violence? Are you attempting to, you know, do something that's illegal or promote something that's illegal. Well, guess what? You can't do that then. Uh, it's, it's been cleared in here. And, and, but, but short of that, look, like people should be able to say what they want to say. You know, they, they really should. And I we, think that's an important distinction. That, that, that is the distinction. So Brian, everybody's saying, okay, I've got my yellow pad. Now what do I do? And I say, make a funnel, a uh, big hole at the top, little hole at the bottom. And what happens is Shank brings us clear and present danger. Chaplinsky brings us fighting words and imminent uh, lawless action. Uh, uh, Brandenburg says, listen, these are pushed down now, uh, not just from state, but to federal law. And then the, the, the laws like Morse, the bong hits for Jesus, and, and Tanker, the black armbands, say there's a big definition between words and statements. Your actions define you. So now we come to Brandy Levy. And we have to ask ourselves a couple of questions. Uh, one, I think that school officials must have the power to prohibit speech that disrupts a school environment. Did hers? No, it was out of school and it was general and nonspecific. It was a foul mouthed rant uh, uh, that, that sounded like something that should be on showtime, so, but she had the right to say. So, so one. real quick, important distinction happened outside school. Now it happened on social media, which is different because now it's amplified, it's louder, and there's more people that is going to hear it. But almost but think it of that. also can be heard at school. Yes, that's that's it permeates the walls of the it, school. It, people it, it, cannot not hear it once. It's right, heard. right. So so there there is that. And and but what you also brought up, remember too, is what she said was yep. not anything specific. There was no General intent other specific. than other than even what she said, like I was frustrated, I was upset, I was angry. So I said, fuck school, fuck cheer, fuck softball, exactly. fuck everything. Okay. She didn't say F this person or i want to exactly. do that to you and i think that that's important because I, I don't want to interrupt but it, it is important no, clear you brought up those two clear points right off clear the bat. distinction so now school officials also are allowed to prohibit speech that is going to invade the rights of other and this is where we get the bullying where she specifies a specific person and says things about that and and i think the legal argument that they're going to wrangle and and decide on is it's going to center on whether this ruling weakens laws that are already in place against bullying and cyberbullying. Clearly it does not because it doesn't say act up. It doesn't say go punch Brandy uh, uh, because she got it or, or poor choice, uh, uh, Sandy, because Brandy uh, got fired and Sandy did. 
it doesn't. So it's not gonna it's not gonna border on that. We can also restrict the student speech if it's lewd, if it's crude, offensive, mm -hmm. sexual. Okay, that's where sexting and all those other things come in. Now, they're violations of many other companion laws, Brian. So my thing, the bottom line is she can say fuck everything uh, because it didn't impede the school function. There was never an intent for her to upend the way they were doing so, it and say block an exit, block yeah. an entrance, you know, show up and have a sit. So, have so a not sit. only did she not have intent, it did in no way did it affect the out. It didn't affect the operation of the school, the normal functions or operations of the school. But it did violate a school policy. So therefore, we may be pissed and we may say, yes, it violated school policy and you're not allowed to say that. But the U.S. Supreme Court comes in over school policy and even state law must acknowledge that, listen, she's got she's right protected. She can say what she wants in this instant. Now, is that going to say that other kids can do it? Listen, it's a case by case basis, Brian. If another kid says it and they slip and they say Tommy Parker, or Johnny uh, uh, and, and Angelo, uh, then guess what? They're going to be in the trick bag. OK, so so don't think that the outcome of of, of uh, Brandy Levy's case is going to change school policy. School policy is still the law of the land, right. except what she did outside and her mouth should have earned her a, a, a soap in the mouth and in a chastising. Uh, but her parents didn't control. And, and here's why I like this case. Um, I like it because of for all of the, I guess, call them dissenting opinions that people yeah, yeah. Are, are putting up, right? They're saying, well, you know, some of what you talked about, well, if this goes through and the Supreme Court says, uh, no, you can, you know, says no to the school saying you can't do that, you can't punish her for that, or you can't do this, you know, shit that she, which if they rule that this falls under her First Amendment rights and she's within her rights to say that, what they're going is, well, that's now the precedent and that's what bullies are going to say and do. And that's what, you know, that that's what they're saying. That's why a lot of people disagree with this or say, no, she should be punished because we can't have this speech. Look, you don't fucking get to say what people can and can't say. You you don't have that right. Like you, you I mean, there, there's unless it's one of these examples we brought up where you say, no, hey, that violates this order here or this amendment here or this is what it where, where that that's, you know, affects our operation and therefore yep. now it becomes a no longer protected speech that's what you can because they're worried and i get it like we don't want people to be bullying others and saying all this stuff but like you you i i mean one i i, I disagree with that way of handling a bullying right. situation anyway but that's a whole different topic I, I think that rather than going around telling people you can't do this and you can't do that we should just be Rather than nerfing the world, you know, we should just be making these kids more resilient. I think that would be a better approach so right. they can handle these situations on their own. But Are that's, you saying we, we could train our way out of this now? Yeah, to, yeah, know, but but that's that's rules. that's separate than the than the free speech kind of kind of discussion, I guess, and and how how words matter. And again, they're saying, oh, well, this will affect bullying, and and now kids saying all these awful nasty things will be will will, will fall under their First Amendment rights. No, it won't. Now, if they're, you, you're, you're get what exactly say, right. you because have it, to take it each on their own. Each case has to be taken for the context in which it was, uh, in which it happened. If, if we were in lower Bratistan, you know, some made up <laughs> I don't, place. I don't uh, know where that uh, is. No, and <laughs> I want, I want it so nobody can is that say a former that it meant Soviet something. Block, uh, no, no, uh, it's country. nowhere, Bill. <laughs> but if, if this 14 year old would have said that, she would have never showed up at school because they yeah. would have stoned her to death. That's what happens not in a democracy. In a democracy, what you get is you get some rich person somewhere that took umbrage to the fact that it was a 14-year-old girl dropping the F word like it was free. Yeah. That's what first insulted people, okay? Yeah. It, it insulted somebody's I, pride. I, I, oh, yeah, I'll show great, her that great. she didn't yeah. have the uh, reason yeah. to do it. Now, if you wanted to change the way this worked, Brian, if you wanted to use the Supreme Court, now that everybody that listened to us knows how they think, what I would have done is I would have said the imminent danger of these words is that they will uh, foment lawless action at that school and have other kids do it and it's going to take away from our our, our uh, assemblies and it's going to take away from our sporting events and therefore that that big thing that's going to cost us time and money and that she flaunted our rules and it's a public school and there's got to be standards now the supreme court's going to go hmm, well, let's look at it but again they're going to imply yeah where the words and where the actions and and she said bad words and she said them all in a row but she wasn't specific about them they weren't tantamount to to causing a uh, 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 personal distress bullying okay and they weren't uh telling people listen don't go to class uh you know the black armbands when when we're talking about tinker 
they were saying we're protesting a war. They got the right to that political speech. Yes. So as much as I hate that we're going to cite a uh, 14-year-old Brandy Levy in her foul mouth, it's soon going to be the law of the land. I, I and and like we always tell people, you know, no one wants their name attached to case law. Nope. Um, but but no, and and that's a uh, important point. And the reason we're getting into this for all of our listeners is this is another aspect of what we do and what we teach and what we talk about because you what we base everything off of are the laws in our country, specifically the Constitution and these Supreme Court cases. Yep. Meaning. This is why we get to say, I don't care what your ideology is. I don't care what your political party is, what your religious, uh, you know, what religion you follow, any of that stuff. None of that stuff matters to me. It's did it, did, did it, it did, are you doing something illegal? What's the precedent yep. for this? Because the rest of that stuff, it, it allows you to take a clinical approach to these situations, right? So rather than, like you said, someone got pissed off because she said that and they didn't like the way, and I don't think 14 year old girls should talk like that. Well, great. I, right. I mean, that's, that's your personal and opinion. Exactly. And yeah. And if your personal opinion, and if you have a 14 year old girl at home and you don't want her to talk that way, you have the absolute right to enforce that rule in your house. But guess what? You don't get to go over to someone else's house and tell them, this is how you talk and this is how you can't. And I love how you put it, the, 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 what, the soap in the mouth uh, decision. Yeah, yeah. So you know what I mean? Can I, can I describe that for <laughs> please, just a second? Please Listen, do. Randy, talk to your parents. Uh, every other F word, uh, drop it from the sentence so we can get through this and, and <laughs> link up with your attorney and your parents to a mouthwash company or a soap company. <laughs> <laughs> and they can have pictures of you with a bar of soap in your mouth and rinsing out your in mouth front of the Supreme Court, 14 year old. Yeah. And, and you'll be a millionaire. Do you get what I'm trying to say? All I want is a little piece of that action. And, and the idea <laughs> is still sound. Uh, uh, Brian, I w I'm willing to fight and die to protect Brandy's right to drop the F-bomb. Yes. But I want to make sure a decision. Yeah. If she would have used the term fag or bitch, yeah, or, or there, there, we're yeah, talking there, about a completely different set completely. of rules completely because there is no provision for hate speech, Brian. There is no U.S. Constitution provision for hate speech, but those are likely to insult imminent lawless action. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And you also don't have the right to make a terrorist threat, and you, right. you don't have to, the right in our country to make a threat against somebody that's different from you because you don't like their difference. And so there I will also stand at the line and say, this is where your free speech ends if you're hurting a transgender person or you're hurting a homeless person mm -hmm. because of their uh, uh, situation or choices in life. You don't have that right. Now, no, right. we have to be clear on that. And, and well, yes, and, and it's all based on <clears throat> on the context, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, not just like I said, you what was your intent with it? But what what yeah. actually what did did this violate someone else's right? Because obviously, yeah, what you, were the outcomes? Are, what were the losses? What yeah, were the damages and, and, that went along? Rather than just taking it for what specifically the words are, you have to take in all of that. And, and it's, it's important. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, that it's, it's another thing that that we look at in in all of these cases with all of these issues and how we approach it is you have to take that clinical yep. approach to it and go well yeah i might not like what they said but this was illegal and this part was legal once you cross the line here that's when everything you say after that is not protected and you are yep. you can be held accountable for that for for whatever reason and, and that's, again, it goes back to the importance of talking about all of these, because one, you're going to see more of these as this social media progresses Absolutely. and people are trying to, you know, cancel each other or something. I hate all those terms. And I, yeah, I, I think because they made such... up the terms and now we have to use them. Well, so you know what it reminds me of? Stop trying to make fetch it, work. It... <laughs> stop, folks at home. Gretchen, stop trying to make Gretchen, fetch work. Stop trying to make fetch work. Um, Am I lying? Isn't that what it becomes? My, mean Girls is one of my favorite movies of all time. But they, it, well, well the, the other thing is too, Greg, is, is that, you know, well, well, we see in those cases, people like to say, well, you know, let's use it over here. Oh, but not over here. Let's use it over there. And go back to everything we just discussed in this episode. This is where these, th and there's more, but this is where they come from, right? This is where you can, you can use legal precedent. And now they're trying to say, oh, you know, Social media is so different. We have to pass new laws. And like, why? We're already there. Yeah, you I just mean, haven't like, read them yet. You, You're exactly right. What did can, we discuss? 10 case laws today? And, and there's a thousand that are, uh, and can every demonstrate my point, Brian. single one applied to a girl who got on Snapchat and said a bunch of things. Yep. I, I mean, one I think sentence, that's, that's punctuated that's, by the F word. 
and sent to all of the friends. I don't know how Snapchat works, but I'm assuming to all of her friends. Yeah, on Snapchat. yeah, yeah, exactly. She a bunch of little foul mouth kids. I yeah, bet. a bunch of. I bet bunch they're of... all dropping that f bomb like it's free. Yeah, you know the first thing that they do in graffiti. What's the first word every kid writes when they yeah. write graffiti? Yeah. It's the f word because it's the most profound, Brian. That's how you know it's, it's kids. It's gonna get the most reaction. That's how you, you know, know it's kids. I, I Somebody's gonna stop uh, and go. It, so the, these are all. The, the, this is exactly why we're we're, we're discussing this because yep. I, I mean. You, this there's no reason to come up with new laws or pass this it just look at what the precedent is i mean it, it, can, can i give you can sorry, i give you a quick example of that in lake here. city you know you know where lake city colorado is okay and you know it's in hinsdale county that, and, and it's that. one of the largest counties in colorado and it's the smallest city right and, you, and the reason i love lake city uh, and hinsdale county lake city was supposed to be denver Back in the day, they were grooming it to mm -hmm. be the state capital. So a lot of things happen. They're a very small place. They know their way around a pandemic, Brian. So uh, I'm at a town hall meeting as the undersheriff of Hinsdale County, and a bunch of people are bringing up their opinions, and you got to sit in there with the town council and listen. It's an open forum. You know, people have the right to, to say whatever they want to say. Every single person that didn't live in Lake City that had a second or third home there wanted a stop sign or a stoplight at a specific intersection. Now, Hinsdale County to this day, and, and specifically Lake City in, in Hinsdale County, has absolutely no red lights, no stop signs, no anything else. Okay. People go just slow enough, and it's just fine. That's why people want to live there. But the minute you want to live there, Brian, you want to bring your rules from where you grew up and you want to change it. Now you want to put a bodega on every corner. You want to put a stop sign. We got to mark the bus stop. Let's stop one way traffic on this road so I can sell my peaches. So, so you know, the you democracy know, means yeah. we do what's best for everybody. Now so we you, do what's best for Leonard and Sally. You, you see you what can, I'm saying? You can go to Texas right now. And on yep. some of the interstates of some of the cities coming in, there's just billboards that say, remember why you left and it's for all the people like in texas oh that are people gosh. moving in from california and stuff like that and and those all the billboards say remember why you left and it's a reminder of like we, we if you left for a reason let's not let's not bring that baggage with us yep. here we have a way of doing things and i love that i did not know that that was out there yeah. but doesn't that epitomize I, what we're talking about here yeah yeah you get no, what i'm trying no, to say uh, we're just bringing something to your mind whether you act on it is your right. That's your right to free expression, isn't it? You know, it, I, I, I totally agree. But don't make me, you know, uh, uh, follow your rules. You think I like that my sports figures are kneeling during the national anthem? Brian, we have our best friends that fought and died uh, yeah. for our right to right. have a national and, anthem. And, but I, I, I keep take, my opinion to myself I, because that's I, your right to do that. Well, yeah, and I take the approach as one. He, they absolutely 100% have that right i support yeah. that right and should be able to that same thing peaceful protests you don't like the message i don't care if you don't like the message if a fucking right is an american citizen to air their grievances and and yep. talk about these issues and if you have yep. a problem with it that's your problem i mean right right you, that doesn't you, mean they're on the wrong side because you disagree with yeah them. you and, and i don't right? want to live in a place of people that just think like me that's not a good place to be in yep. right i want that hey, i'm flying you, a flag right outside on yeah. the Orchard rogue manor west yeah that's my absolute right to do it yes you drive by you don't have to kneel you don't have to salute it that's your absolute right but if you impede my ability to put up my flag or you steal or burn down my flag, now we have a case. That's what I'm trying to say, people. Just study your history. Study no. the gosh damn Constitution. And, and these these cases, because you you threw in a couple in there that I was like, oh, I haven't, I didn't actually know about this one. I mean, some like the Brandenburg and those, those are huge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone like, you know, but some yeah, of them. Chaplinsky, they're, they're every day. I, I, you know, I thought you had something against, you know, people during World War I <laughs> pushing socialist yeah. examples. Brian, like, geez, Brian, Greg, folks, like... <laughs> folks I, I, actually, I sent Brian a couple and I said, hey, I want to bring these up just before we went on the air. And the very first three are bagging at socialists handing out pamphlets. And Brian goes, ah, here's where your brain is at. It's like, but Greg, they're just handing out we, pamphlets. <laughs> if we only saw it through that lens, Brian. But, but you, that, you get it. And I made that joke exactly. for that reason that's because that's how everyone thinks. It's like, oh, well, you know, this is this is precedent, man. This is this is where we're at. Like it, it's yep. it's one it's okay we have a document you know we have a way of interpreting these things uh you you might not you're not going to like it all the time but yep. but that's welcome to a free and open society i mean yep. that's you don't get to dictate how right, everyone gets to be you get to we've dictate places, what you do yeah we, we've been in places twice one and, and i'm not going to say either the place because we travel there often uh one was a person put up the rainbow flag 
that they bought online because they loved the color and they thought it was beautiful. And in the country they were, it wasn't. And that's the last words he said before they chopped his head off. Uh, the other place is on the border of the stands. And uh, on one side of the street, you can say what you want. You can publish what you want. And on the other side of the stand, uh, you do that. And there's a gulag in your future and nobody will ever hear from you again. There's a bunch of unmarked potter's graves out there. And my thing is we live in the greatest country in the face of the world uh, because we have the right to say things like we're the greatest country in the face of the world. And there's apologists out there that, oh, we it, well, yeah, that but, but, and then and someone else say that. It has the yes. right to say, no, we're the worst country in the world. Yep. Uh, I mean, yep. that's, okay. and we can have breakfast together and, and we can go to a movie together and we should be completely okay with each other's opinions. And you know what? We can't let divisiveness, meaning uh, disagreement, come in the way of our constitutional rights. The, the amendments, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, the, the amendments to the Constitution are the most important document uh, other than the Bible that I've got in my house. And, and, and I believe in the Bible. You might not. You, you might believe in the Talmud or you might believe in, 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 in the Quran or you might not believe in anything, Brian. And I will also kill and fight your right not to believe do you see what i'm saying and you and i both have a friend that doesn't want to do that they're like <laughs> yeah. it's us or them all the time yeah. you know what i'm talking about yeah, but, it, but i i have to navigate that brian because i can't say that i'm legal called, moral and ethical and not not live that way that's, right it's called it's called being a human being uh yeah yeah but it, where's the zealot Where, where's the zealot the zealot is over here or a zealot is over here they're always on the extremes and they're on the extremes the extremist views are what damages the fabric of our nation I, uh, yeah, that even though they're protected folks, even no, though. and, and, and I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I just think sometimes people forget that, like, sometimes people are doing those actions to get a reaction. So if you therefore then yep. give them the reaction they want, I mean, you're, you're furthering their you're, agenda. You're paying <laughs> right into it. The, but the, again, the it's whole, protected. We're okay with that. The, it, well, that goes back to the, like you said, the, the kneeling during the national anthem is, is a perfect example because one, there was, we have a historical example of that, of someone not wanting to salute the flag. And yep. so, so it, we have legal precedent for that. And then the other thing, it's like, well, they're, they're, they're they won, they have the right to do that. And that that's fine. And you getting upset and screaming about it. I think that's maybe, maybe they got what they wanted. I, I mean, and, and you, guess you what? gave it that's to them. Fine too. <laughs> so, that's so, fine too. No, no, no. You, yeah, absolutely. We sit around the kitchen table. I totally agree with you, Brian. If we sit around the kitchen table and I go, that damn guy, when you yeah. saw him with the motion and he did the other thing, <laughs> it's okay. That's, yeah. you know what? That's what makes us like harder and stronger because we share those. You become more resilient when you get into the fray, Brian, you step back, you think about it with that scar tissue and you get right back into the fray. Yeah, but but it, it, with all these, I always take a you know look at at, at uh, you know when we have those interactions, discussions, uh, uh, opinions, reactions, uh, whatever it is you're watching. Some it's you know you, it, it should change you and you should change it, right? So when you I and agree. I have a discussion or we're disagreeing about something a little bit of what I was thinking should fall into your bucket and a little bit of what you're thinking should fall into mine. Right. I, I mean, yep. cause, cause you're, it, that's, that's strengthening you. Like you said, that's developing that resilience. That's, that's chipping exactly. away at that stone. That's the, um, you know, the samurai swords, right. When they would build them, the Japanese swords, yep. they would, you soften up the metal and heat it up and then pound it up, pound it, pound it up, fold it, pound it up, pound it up, pound it, pound it, pound it, pound it, like, like 10,000 times. And you're going, yep. that's what makes it so hard. It's the constant beating and beating and taking it. And then, cause you're, you're getting rid of, of the yep. things that, that don't survive and you're only keeping the strongest parts, the strongest elements. Well, that's a give and take. And, and that's why I love these cases. And, and anytime we've had different discussions about constitutional law stuff, where it is, and I always generally try to take the, whatever the opposite is of what you're, you're thinking just to get get you riled no, up no, which, is great. But, but, which is a per, for, for the purposes of either demonstration or description or and i or, buy into it every time well but but it's also it allows you to lay out lay out this is why this is the precedent these are these are my reasons and and some people don't don't understand that's why i always ask if, if anyone's listening and you see some of the some of the stranger comments on our, our Instagram posts. I can when only I just, imagine. My, well, my response is always like, hey, or if I ask a question, hey, what is this or where is this located? And someone will just give an answer. And I, my response is what? Prove it. Like, tell me yes. why. And man, some people, so those of you who follow along, are doing an awesome job. Like they'll lay out, okay, well, I've seen this before and that likely means this. And I mean, they're just doing boom, artifacts and evidence support of a reasonable conclusion. I love it. It's so cool. Right. And then this one guy the other day was like, what do you mean? I gave my answer. Like why you you asked me what you asked me to guess that was my guess. It's like, 
thumbs up, buddy. You, you missed the purpose of the exercise. And the purpose of the exactly. exercise was what we're doing right now. You have to articulate, this is the legal president. This is what the context is. This is what I think it is. This is why I think it's that. Can, can I throw something out there for you? No. I miss our, our carry the load folks. And uh, people look up carry the load, C, T, and L, all capital. Uh, look up uh, Matt and, and look up Debbie Wright. Look up those wonderful people. But Brian, you and I are down in, in Texas and we went to Dealey Plaza. We wanted to see it for ourselves. Yeah. We wanted to prove it. We yeah. walked on the steps. We saw all the displays. We went to where the actions happened. And I remember crying because we let one person have his way and mm -hmm. his say. And what that person did is changed, altered the trajectory of the American history uh, by becoming an assassin. Now, is that acceptable? Is it okay to say no to you and you're named this and you have to be put in this place? No, it's a free expression of ideals. And why I was crying, Brian, was when we were down there in the ground, I'm remembering these vivid pictures of people waving and holding up their children. And there was so much promise. And, and a couple of rifle shots later, there wasn't. So we have to embrace the constitution. We have to embrace the rule of law. We have to embrace the differences. Look for the, the similarities the, and stop looking for the differences. Brian. And that goes into um, if you try to continue to take away someone's speech or you yep. want to say you can't say this or you can't do that. Um, I'm guessing their reaction isn't going to be, oh, okay, you're right. I was wrong. Thanks. Let me join your side. Uh, no, I think it's it's probably going to um, embolden them even more. It's probably going to, they're now going to be even, even more dedicated to whatever their cause or line of thinking is when you try to take away that speech. This is why I'm such a proponent of let people talk. Have you, them, you, you, let you, them you have their say. Let, like the whole you know, it's like the whole counter protesting. Okay. So you're going to, you want to fight. You basically just want to show up and fight because, because that's what you want. You don't like them. Hey, try this, bring a folding chair, bring a, bring a glass of lemonade, sit down and let them talk because if they really are crazy um, um, extremist views, they're going to run out of evidence to support their claims. Eventually they're going yep. to eventually just, they're, 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 they're going to run out of things to say, they're going to run out of reasons why. And to the point was just, just let them go on, continue to the point where their own supporters are going to be like, Hey, wait a minute. Like that sounds a little, that sounds a little right. odd. Like, but if we want to fight them, well, then guess what? You're going to get a fight. And, and I, I don't think that's the best approach in our country in the way we handle these things. I just don't, I, I, I just, I just think of you're, you're so focused on tactical, victories you you're gonna you're you you're, you're gonna lose the war you're so close focused on those battles you lose the war right you're so focused on i need to be in the moment right now that you you have no plan for where this is going unless you're a socialist handing out pamphlets <laughs> yeah, pamphlet. you know that the supreme World court's War gonna whoop your ass no matter what you do no but it's funny isn't it it's funny it how the pendulum always swings it Brian. does the pendulum swings right and left but guess what there's always a center Yep. And the closer you are to the center, the more likely your views are going to be accepted. You know, and you say that all the time. You say, it, it, yeah, you know, the, the I, bad ideas don't stick around. Throughout they don't. History. They don't. They good, really yeah, don't, good, good ideas stand the test of time. Uh, sure bad do. ones don't. The bad one ideas, they'll keep coming back, but they don't ever catch enough Kelly traction. Kelly calls that the bad penny. You know, <laughs> there Kelly you always says, and when I look at something, she just says, bad penny. And I go, get it. I immediately get what she means. It's going to turn up, you know, and that doesn't mean that's the norm. So you're probably going to be okay. So okay. You got my prediction. I'd love to know yours. I know we got places to go and people to see. So what's so, your prediction on this one, buddy? Oh, they're going to side with her on this one. That's, okay. I mean, this is, to me, this is like a kind of a, a no They're going to give her a pen. She's going to be up there waving. They'll be on the steps. I, I would, you know, it would be great just as like, you know, the, they, they, they included a bar of soap with their opinion or something yeah, like that. Like, don't you they, think that that's so ironic? It's amazing. But, but, but you know, just being like, hey, sponsored you know, by here, Boris, the mouthwash. You know, you're a kid, wash your mouth out with soap. You yep. know better. You shouldn't be what talking like that. What were you like thinking, that. defense? You know, uh, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But no, they're they're gonna they're gonna side with her on this one, yep. I, I think. Yeah. So, and mom and dad, just remember how your fourteen year old will be remembered throughout history for this decision, being the F girl. So, yeah, uh, well, you're welcome. <laughs> you know, jeez, and I so, mean that only in the words. Don't, don't that. forget. Not smart enough to that read it. Training changes behavior.